Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 4.13 and in this lesson we're going to take a look at the first modulator device that comes with Bitwig Studio. It's not actually the first one in the order but it's the first one I want to cover and that is the LFO which stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. So just remember that everything we're talking about builds on itself and it's important to understand each and every concept from the previous videos up until this video, because I'm not gonna go through and show you every place you could drop an LFO or maybe how you could build an LFO into an FX layer or how you could build an LFO onto an effect track. All of that stuff should kind of already be triggering in your mind at this point. And instead, I'm just gonna cover the LFO, cover all of the functions of it, and hopefully you understand what's happening with that device, and then you can add that to all of the knowledge you've hopefully already gathered in this section. So this is gonna be our sample we're gonna use. Little accordion action, love it. So here's how you get to the LFO. What you're gonna do is you're going to click the plus button here and all we see are the effects and the containers. Well, we need to go and find the LFO. So we'll click this little button to open up all the rest of our options and it's right here in the modulators, LFO perfect. So now if I play back, start adjusting some parameters. Uh, nothing seems to be happening. And that's because the LFO in and of itself doesn't do anything. The LFO is a modulator. It is going to take a parameter and modulate it. Okay, if I can, if that doesn't make any sense, I don't know what does. The best way to really explain this though is to just get started with it. And it would be one thing for me to go back through the history and explain exactly how a low frequency oscillator does work in the analog domain, but I'm not gonna do that because in the digital domain, this is an emulation. And really, when I say LFO, just think cyclical modulation. And as an example of cyclical modulation, let's say we have our gain here, and I'm going to make a couple of points. I'm gonna get them to snap so I can get this to work properly. Okay, so here are all my points. And I'm gonna take the second point, I'm gonna put it down. I'm gonna take this point, drop it all the way down. Take that point, drop it all the way down. So this, in a way, is an LFO, only I had to program it in myself, and that can get a little tedious and obnoxious. But you can see that I have taken this, and now we're going on this cycle, and it's repeating over and over and over again. An LFO is going to do that, but it's just going to do that manually. We're not going to have, or it's going to do it automatically, I should say. We don't have to go and draw anything in. It's just going to take care of that for us. So cyclical modulation LFO. Connect those two together, and you're always going to be good to go. So the first thing we have to do is drop an effect in here that we're planning to use the LFO on. And I don't know, why don't we start with a filter? That's a very common LFO modulated um, effect. And I'm gonna just turn this to zero real quick. So how we set what we're gonna modulate, we use the LFO to do that. I'm going to click it and I'm gonna select the cutoff here. You can already see it's starting to move by itself and it's going really, really fast. So if I play this right now, it might just sound like uh, something kind of crazy. And it does. So what do we have to do? Well, we have to turn the speed down. And the speed right now is running in the classic analog LFO mode, which is Hertz. So we're running at 21.4 Hertz. And if we go up to 50 Hertz, things are gonna get insane. And we can actually do some really advanced stuff with LFOs, which I'll talk about in the synthesis portion. But for now, if we listen back to this, We're getting a totally new timbre. Okay, but let's put it down somewhere a little bit slower and manageable. So right now we're cutting in and out. We're going all the way down to zero. And that's obviously a little bit too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna narrow this range. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select clear. And just as easily, you could just actually click this again, but just so you guys can see, and I'm going to try to narrow this range down just a little bit. I'm gonna put the cutoff up a little higher. And let's see if we can get this dialed in just right. 
So if I go up too high, it's just gonna sit at the top portion. And I don't want that. I want it to be continuing to move. So this should be good. Hopefully we still have signal all the way down here. It might be a little too extreme. And now let's take a listen to it. So maybe it's still a little bit too much. Well, I can actually adjust the depth, the amount that it's working by turning this depth knob down. So just watch and see how this range narrows as I pull this down. Perfect. So right now we're working and it's actually moving like a sine wave and that's what these images are for. And this is what dates back to the analog technology. You're gonna find LFOs in most synthesizers and they would actually use the wave shapes that were built into that synthesizer or in some cases just a sine wave. That's the classic and that's what we're working on right now. But we can adjust this and we can make it a triangle. If we pull up or we could make it a square and you see it's just jumping back and forth like a siren. Or we could use a saw up, a saw down, that sounds pretty cool, or a sample and hold circuit. If I turn this up, you'll get more of an idea of what it's doing. So sample and hold is the random generator inside of the LFO. It's literally like what you think. If we think all the way back to our video on sampling, I tried to explain sampling as snapshots along the waveform. So when we're going to digital, especially if I zoom way, way in here, at every point, there's just a little snapshot that's taking place. And so what sample and hold is, is just imagine a bunch of snapshots, but those snapshots being totally random. And so each time it's taking a sample, it just is cutting to one of these places within our range. This next little button here, this plus minus button, I don't know what it's actually called, but what this is going to do is it's going to adjust what happens when we actually route um, our LFO to begin with. So notice the range that we're using here. And now you can look and see that I didn't really select that much, but it's actually taking into account both a positive and a negative motion when I pull that up to set the range. If I turn this off, it's only literally going to work with what I've set here. Okay, so I hope that makes sense to you guys. It actually confused me a little bit when I first was messing around with it, uh, but now it does make perfect sense to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back on. And the R is gonna stand for retrigger. In this particular instance where we have this just looping and it's an audio track, the retrigger is not gonna do a whole lot. But for example, if we had a bunch of MIDI notes and we had a dubstep bass line, and we're wondering why is the LFO sound all funky at the start of each bar, it's because the retrigger is probably not on. And so the LFO just continues to run. But retrigger will, every time the LFO stops, because there's no more audio or there's no more MIDI data, the LFO will retrigger from wherever you have the phase positioned. Right now we have the phase at 0%. And so that means we start right at zero. And then we go up, we come down, we hit that zero crossing point, we go down, we come up, hit the zero crossing point, go up, come back down, etc. We can set where we want the phase to start of this LFO by adjusting the phase knob. And so the only way you can really kind of see this is if I turn this way down real quick. I'm actually going to turn retrigger on as well. And if I adjust the phase, it's just going to basically turn this out. So it's going to pretend like the wave is actually moving um, across. So if I go up to 50%, actually, if I go to 25%, we should hypothetically start the LFO at this very top point here in the cycle. If I go up to 50%, we go back to the center point. If I go to 75%, we're at the bottom of that crest. And then back to 100%, we're just recycling and starting over. Again, if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask them in the comments. The last little parameter device we have control over is this guy right here, which is going to turn the LFO on and off of sync. 
So this bottom one, and this is just a basically identical to what we have in the first one, this bottom one is already set to time in beats. And you see we have a few different options, time in seconds, AKA time in Hertz. We also then have time in beats, which is now synced to our 128 tempo. We can hear this if we turn the metronome on. <laughs> And here's where you can actually hear that phase because now when I flip the phase up, you can hear that it's not falling right on the beat. As compared to Okay, we also have options for time in dotted notes. So now we're in quarter dotted or quarter triplets. So all of that is pretty self-explanatory for you guys. Now, the cool thing about each of these LFO devices that actually comes with two LFOs built in. And obviously you can stack LFOs on top of LFOs. And if I'm in here, I could go and I could add another LFO modulator and things could get really wacky. Um, but what you have to remember is that these LFOs will only be able to affect things that are either buried inside them or to their right. But specifically it has to be to the right and in the FX category. So if I'm clicking LFO here, there's nothing I can modulate except for the parameters in the LFO too. If I select this LFO, you can see I have control of everything to the right, including this new LFO. And let's see, if I add an effect in here, like a ring mod, and I try to work it with LFO 1 from the first LFO device, I can do that. So when you ever are working with LFOs and you want maximum control, the first thing you're going to want to drop on that FX layer or that FX chain is probably going to be one of your modulators because it does give you the most power and most flexibility that way. So if I wanted to, I could use LFO2. Let's set it to, why not the sample and hold circuit? I'm going to use LFO2 to mess with the resonance here. And I'm actually going to set this out of plus minus. I'm going to clear that real quick, turn this knob down a bit, LFO2, and we'll give it a pretty wide range. And we'll set this one to, I'm going to set this to half notes, and I'm going to really speed this guy up. Yeah, we'll do 16th notes, why not? And phase isn't really going to make any difference. So now we can listen back to this. <laughs> Go to Give a syncopation going on. I'll go back and just adjust this and pull this guy down a little bit. Very cool. And then the last little thing to note about the LFO is that you can actually use LFO2 to mess with some of the parameters in LFO1. For example, we could um, adjust this depth knob here. Why not? And then we could also affect the wet mix. We can even affect the pre and post. So maybe we want this to modulate a little bit as well. See what happens when we do that. That will be very interesting. And then with LFO1, we can also manipulate some things. So we can manipulate the dry wet mix here. And it's doing both of these now. So it's going to be out of control. We could also impact um, the depth. And maybe we even impact the resonance a little bit as well. So now we have tons of movement going on, and this is just one LFO device working with one filter on this one little thing here. And I'm just going to throw um, a little bit of reverb after the fact just to spice things up a little bit. And we'll go with the falling hall, which I think is a pretty cool preset. Here we go. <laughs> And if we wanted, we could take this one step further and move the reverb in. 
Okay, so now the reverb is within the LFO, which means I can use the LFO to mess around with the parameters inside of the reverb. And so I'll take LFO 1, I'll set that to mix. I'll take LFO 2 and I'll set that to width. And also we'll have that mess with this parameter here. And then maybe LFO 1 will slightly mess with the reverb time. I also want something maybe more aggressive on the diffusion and on the buildup. That's going to make big differences. So I'm going to set both of these here. And then just to add a touch of randomness, I'll set the LFO 2 to these guys as well. That might be going a little bit too far down, so I'll actually pull this way up to the top. All right, cool. So now let's take a listen to this. This might be crazy. Here we go. Way too much on the mix. So that's pretty cool, right? We can do a whole lot with just this tiny little device. And uh, nowadays, a lot of the digital audio workstations are starting to add these independent LFOs, where in the past, you're only going to find them on synthesizers. So this has been a trend, and a lot of sound designers and creative-minded people absolutely love having access to these modulator devices. In the next video, we're going to look at the step sequencer mod and talk about how that guy works. So. Thank you so much for watching and you will hear from me again in the next lesson. Take care.